In this video, we're gonna be looking at the coordinate plane, slope, and density, and how these three really are connected. So let's start with, with the coordinate plane. Uh, this is the first coordinate, uh, so just a part of the coordinate plane, but this is showing us what uh, a graph typically looks like uh, in math class. And this is probably the one that you're most familiar with. Uh, this one is relating two variables. The variable on the x-axis is cookies. That would be your independent variable. And then your dependent variable or your y here would be happiness. So we can look and see specific points here, uh, a point right here, or maybe a point here, and we can actually find these units. So this point would be like six, five. And if we think about what that actually means, the six is the X coordinate, which we said was cookies. And then the five was your happiness score based on that many cookies. So your happiness score. And so this is really saying that for six, when you eat six cookies, your happiness score is five. This point right here that we that I marked earlier is like, you know, maybe four, three. So a four cookies would give you a happiness score of three. And as we look at this, as we move from left to right on this graph and on this function, we're actually seeing that as cookies go up, happiness goes up. And so we're relating these two variables and we're actually trying to figure out, uh, we could figure out how much it goes up, uh, how much our happiness score goes up by the number of cookies that we eat. Here's another one. Uh, this one looks a little bit different. This is a quadratic uh, formula. So this would be dealing with x squared creates this parabola. And so on this parabola, we could, we could trace this function and find different points all along the way of connecting these variables. One thing that would be important to consider here, you know, is at, at the very peak, uh, maybe around 12 cookies looks like, now our happiness starts decreasing. And again, we could relate these variables together and we could find different scores. So like this could be like 18, four. We'd say with 18 cookies, our happiness score was four. We could say that at 12 with 12 cookies, our happiness score was uh, a bit over nine, maybe 9.5. And so again, we could connect these two variables. And the idea with connecting these variables is we can start seeing a pattern evolving in these. And this pattern that we usually see, especially uh, specifically for linear functions, is what we call slope. So it's a constant rate of change. So the the function is changing at the same rate each time. So it's a line. And so when we're graphing this, you know, you, you could see a line that goes like this, or you might see a line that, that goes down as we move left to right. But no matter what, we can always find the slope, which is the constant rate of change for this, meaning it's just changing at the same rate each time. You see this form, uh, M being used for slope, and then you see this delta y over delta x. Now, many people look at this in different, there's different ways to look at it. I find the easiest way is to take this delta and think of it as the change in. So I would read this top as change in y divided by the change in x. So we're really just seeing how the y values are changing on top, and then how are the x values changing on the bottom. So if I gave you two points, we could actually find the slope rather quick. So let's just do that really quick. Uh, here's two points. I like stacking them and, I, and I'm just asking myself, how is the Y changing? Here are the Y values. The Y changed from six to 10. That means that I added four. And then if I'm trying to see how the X changed, I have to go the same route. So I have to start with the three and go to the one and I actually subtracted two. So if I'm doing the slope here of these, between these two points, we're actually finding the delta Y, which was four positive four over the delta x, the change in the x, and then we're going to simplify that down. So we're actually going to have a slope between those two points of negative two or negative two over one. And so we're going to use this along with units to examine uh, what, this, what this looks like in real time. So if I, if I consider this, each point, each of these starts at zero, zero, each of these functions Who's moving the fastest? I want you to just think really quick, 
Who's moving the fastest? You might have looked at this in a couple different ways. You might have looked to see a biker, a runner, a walker, and you're probably like, a biker can move the fastest. Well, that's what your conventional wisdom would, would think, but uh, actually according to the graph, the steepest slope, which means that the Y is increasing faster than the X, is actually the walker. The walker is actually moving faster than, than the runner or the biker. And you might be asking yourself, how can that happen? How can the walker be the fastest one and the biker be the slowest one? And just trying to make sense of this in terms of the steepness of these lines. And the way that I think about it, how that's possible is, what if it's an Olympic speed walker? They're moving the fastest. They have the steepest slope. They have the greatest uh, value in terms of slope. The runner might be your average runner, uh, just running in the park for leisure and for exercise. And your biker might be a, a little kid who can't, just really can't move that fast. And so this is how we can look at slope and start making sense of the slope. But one of the things I really want to point out here is that we could find this rate of change. Let's just look at the runner. Uh, here's a point that's 210. And then another point up here that's, uh, let's say, 418. I just want to find the slope of this really quick. So I'm going to stack those just like we did previously in terms of X's and Y's. And then I'm just going to see how is the Y changing? Well, I added eight. The X is changing. I added two. So my slope was eight over two. Now, the thing that I want to add in here, though, is the delta Y. Y was in meters and X was in seconds. It was time in seconds. So the Delta Y, the eight is actually eight meters. And the, the Delta X was seconds. It was the time. So really what we're saying here is eight meters for every two seconds is how fast that runner is moving. So the units play a, a crucial role here. And we could actually simplify this down and say, four meters for every one second if we simplify that fraction. And so this would be the rate of change in which this runner is moving, four meters for every one second. Now we could also do that for the walker, for the biker, uh, but those units play a pretty crucial role in this. Now let's take that idea to density. Density is the amount of mass per unit of volume. Uh, it's for its formula that you see is mass divided by volume. You usually see the mass in grams and maybe the volumes in milliliters. So your density is sometimes grams over milliliters. So the question kind of becomes how can we how can we find that density given some information that we know about the measurements of, of the mass versus the volume. So here's a, here's a pretty simple graph. Um, and I'm just gonna point out a couple of these points. So this point's one, two, this point's two, four. Notice that this is linear, right? Creates a line. So it creates a line and I want to find, let's just find the slope. Let's call it M, delta Y over delta X, right? Change in Y over change in X. And again, I like stacking these points. I think that makes the most sense to me. The Y is changing, you're subtracting two. The X is changing, you're subtracting one. So the Y here was your mass and it was in grams. So I'm gonna put that in to on top, but I'm gonna put negative two uh, grams. And then my X was negative one, but it was in milliliters. So I'm using my ver my uh, my units on this in terms of what X and Y are in order to write this. And then I would simplify negative two over, over, over negative one, and I would make that positive two grams for one milliliter. And although we wrote that as M equals, that's the slope, really what this is, is D equals two grams over one milliliter. Notice I did use the lowercase d there. On the previous slide, I used uppercase. Uh, should not have been the case, should be lowercase here. 
And then another way that you could write this is that density is equal to two grams per milliliter, per meaning per one milliliter. So either one of these represents the, the same value here in terms of the density. So we can find the density from the graph. Now, here's another example where we're looking at three different uh, liquids, and we can actually find the, the density of each of these. So I'm color coordinating it here. So for the red line, my slope, my Y increased by 10, and that was 10 grams. And then my X increased by four, which was four milliliters. And in math class, you know, you might, you might just take that and your math teacher may say, you know, five over two, is, that, that's how you'd leave that. Or you may take it and make it even more specific and you can do 2.5 over one. And so that's 2.5 grams over one milliliter. So I simplified that all the way down so that the bottom of this fraction is one. So I divided the top and bottom by two, essentially. That would give you your density. For me, I like that as a more precise uh, density that I can compare to other densities. All right, let's look at, let's look at liquid B here uh, in the gold. And so my density here, it looks like my, my Y increased by six. If I needed to stack those, I could. So six grams. And then my X looks like it also increased by six milliliters. So I'd simplify that down and I'd say one gram per milliliter is the density. Our last one, uh, just choosing two points on here, density, uh, change in Y, looks like the Y went up three grams and the X uh, went six milliliters. And so then I could take this and simplify this down and make it 0.5 grams for one milliliter or 0 0.5 grams per milliliter. And so one of the things that you'll notice here is in math class, a lot of times we don't like decimals within fractions and know that that is possible to happen. And actually within density, many times you're trying to get it for like one milliliter. And so you're actually trying to simplify it down as far as possible. So in order to simplify that fraction, um, I would just, you know, uh, on the red one up here, like I said, I divided top and bottom by two to simplify it down so the bottom is one. We call that the unit rate, meaning for one milliliter. Here's the last one. Uh, you get to the point here where you start reading this and you kind of look with your eyes from left to right. As we increase volume, what happens to the, to the mass? So you're kind of looking at it two different ways. You're looking at it as we move from left to right, and then how steep is it going? So if I asked you which one was the highest density here, we would actually say A is the highest density, and we would be able to say that D has the lowest density. If you weren't sure, what you could do as a problem solving strategy is actually put units in here and find the densities of each of these. And so that, that's another strategy that you can use. But in general, the steeper the slope means that the mass is increasing faster than the volume is. So the steeper this line gets, the higher the density that the, that the um, element or compound would have. Some of the final details of, of this, uh, use the units, use the units that are given, and that's usually the X and Y axis here. Uh, also know what density involves. Density is really just calculating the relationship between mass and volume of, of any object. And so we can find this density, but this really helps us uh, organize our thoughts because mass is usually in grams or kilograms or something like that. Uh, volume usually in, in liters, milliliters, something that's going to measure volume. And so this helps us tremendously in terms of figuring this out. And the last thing is that slope is your change in Y over your change in X. 
And so all of this, all of these problems really fit together like a puzzle and they should all be in agreement. Your change in Y over your change in X should be your mass over your volume. And we should link those units and that should all agree. And so these are just things to keep in mind as you're going through these problems uh, involving density.